Um, but without further ado, um, we are now joined this evening by two fantastic uh, botanists, I hope they were both called themselves botanists, um, who, who established in 2016 at uh, RBGQ, Botanical University Challenge, so that's Jonathan Mitchley and John Warry. Um, Botanical University Challenge is a, a grassroots organisation, big ideas and big plans for the future, um, and is designed as a fun, friendly event to bring together student botanists from across the UK and Ireland to celebrate plants and the talent and knowledge of our next generation of botanists. Uh, so I'm sure they will introduce themselves, but a, a brief uh, overview. Jonathan is the Associate Professor of Field Botany at the University of Reading, and he spends his time spreading the good news about plants, their beauty, fascination and importance to anyone who will listen. And John was Professor of Botany at Aberystwyth before he moved to become the Vice Chancellor of the University of Natural Resources and Environment in Papua New Guinea. And he's now retired and uh, doing what sounds like a very nice thing of writing botany books and running a small holding. So without further ado, I will pass over to Jonathan and John. I'll just say hello. Um, hello all. And uh, we're going to, this is a double act, uh, but John's going to kick off. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Can we put the next slide on then, Jonathan? So I think the story all begins back in 2015 with a gang of three of us who all knew our, each other independently, but we all were on the BSBI, what was called uh, Education and Training. Was it Training and Education? Uh, about that sort of time. And we were all facing sort of independently similar issues. One, I think we were getting tired of hearing that uh, Mark Twain line about rumours of the death of botany have been greatly exaggerated because we'd all got sort of vibrant, if small groups of botany students. We were sort of probably putting activities on for our students, uh, particularly through the, the winter when there's, there's, there's less plants around to be, be seen, including quizzes. And if you're putting a, a quiz on with a small group of students, then you very rapidly think it'd be nice to sort of have a quiz challenging somebody else. Uh, so there are ideas like that. And I distinctly remember meeting my first year tutees who were all botanists. And one of them really sort of took the wind out of my sails when they came out of with a line that they'd never met another botanist before. And they'd never felt comfortable in company admitting that they were a botanist. They'd somehow, it was a bit like saying, I'm an alcoholic and sort of confessing to that. It was a very sort of odd line. But all of a sudden you could see these students relaxing in the presence of other botanists. But they were still a fairly small, isolated group. And I think the three of us were sort of thinking along the similar lines that it would be nice to do something to get these isolated groups of students together to celebrate the knowledge that they had uh, and I think one of my uh, students at the time was doing a PhD with me was was uh, Sam Thomas who I'll probably appear in sort of a later slide and Sam was I always describe Sam as being raised by the BSBI in the way that Mowgli was raised by wolves so it was a, a brilliant botanist who now works at the Natural History Museum uh, and uh, he, one of the motivations for me as well was he'd got so much botanical of passion and, and ex, uh, expertise that it would just be great to provide a forum for students like that to sort of to be able to sort of show off a little and to be a uh, a venue to sort of display this wonderful sort of knowledge and, and passion for for botany that the students had got. Right, Jonathan, over to you. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Um, as yeah, John said, <laughs> that's right. Yes. Yeah, so as John said, we were we were all really uh, the three of us struck myself, John, and and, and Paul Ash and Edge Hill um, by this this view that this prevailing view um, about the potential death of botany, and yet we could see around us um, that if with the right uh, tuition and the right enthusiasm, there are plenty of of botany students around. Um, uh, very often. Um, spending all their spare time um, out looking at plants or doing whatever they what, whatever they um, were interested in, in in relation to to botany, and so that was really where this idea for Botanical University Challenge. 
came from in 2015. And so between us, we organized the first one that took place in 2016 in the spring, I think March, um, at Q um, in the Jodrell. Um, and uh, we got five teams together. Uh, and so the, the theme of this this talk really is how we've progressed from this the, the, these, this beginning. The, 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 the seed that we sowed um, has really taken um, taken root. So five teams: Aberystwyth, Truth, Edge Hill, Q, uh, University of Southampton, and and Reading. Um, notice Q in there. Q is not a university, so although we call it University Challenge, we welcome any institute um, which has students uh, studying plants. In, in whatever uh, diverse form. Um, and here is the, the lineup um, of, of all the teams there. And James Wong was in the chair. And maybe John, you'd like to say a little something because actually um, having been involved in all these, seeing these photographs, it's really quite, um, it, it's quite wonderful to, to, to see these. Notice um, Josh Stiles there on the Edge uh, Hill team. Uh, he'll feature again later. But do you want to say anything, John? Any memories of... of well, of one of the things that one sort of jumps out of, from that picture is the fact that Colin's not on it. Because Colin Club from Q has been involved from the start as well and, and sort of probably said the first ever words. That, he did. Because uh, he, he welcomed us uh, to, to Q. Uh, and Colin's been a great supporter of Botanical University Challenge ever since. Uh, as has uh, James Wong who uh, I think it's fair to say uh, was a, a, he's an absolutely wonderful person, but he got no idea about the rules of university challenge. And the first year we sort of uh, based the format more closely on the TV version of university challenge than we have done subsequently. But James had not bothered to do any research and didn't understand how the scoring worked and threw out questions that he didn't like. But he did it with such a charm, but also with such knowledge of the plant. So he, he had a habit of, of having a, a mini lecture between each set of questions. So, it, yeah, it was fabulous entertainment, but it wasn't the most organised quiz competition that we've ever been. Absolutely no. I think the introductions are actually on my um, YouTube channel, which is Dr. M Goes Wild, um, and uh, we, you can actually hear Colin's words and and, and James introducing that um, that first Botanical University challenge. Uh, I took a very shaky video of the whole thing, which which we haven't uh, ever done anything with. But um, the uh, eventual winners of the first. Um, Botanical University Challenge was actually University of Reading. And one of the things that we're really enthused about with Botanical University Challenge is that plants are not only fun, um, fascinating and important, but also they serve uh, um, to uh, to provide careers, um, uh, jobs and, and careers. And so I just wanted to mention briefly the, the, the Reading team, three of the Reading team I'm still in touch with. So um, Louise Denning at the front is now Coastal Specialist with Natural England based in Lincolnshire. Um, Jordan Billsborough behind her is with um, the science department at RHS Wisley and Jar Skipper at the back is doing some amazing botanical stuff in France. So, um, you know, and, and I'm sure the others there are all, all uh, um, uh, showing similar use of plants in, in, in their careers. Um, I don't know, John, if you want to say a bit here, but this is the format. So James Wong sat in the middle there and the questions, some of the questions were word questions, some of them were picture questions. Here's a couple. Um, oh, there's the answers. Um, identify the botanist, identify the grass. OK, well, I, I'm guessing you all knew that's Linnaeus there um, and the it's cooch grass. Uh, Elemis Repens, assuming that's its, its its current name. So that was the format. As John says, it was much closer to the um, uh, the television version of Botanic University Challenge. There were buzzers um, and um, starters and, and, and bonus questions. There were buzzers or there's a bell that year? Yeah, I think they were bells actually rather than buzzers. Bells and whistles. Yeah, it'd be nice if there's anyone who's watching who was actually there um uh, in the audience here who was actually at that very first one so that was that was uh, the auspicious start uh, and it really was it was it was a fantastic afternoon um and we ended up at the i think the pub there is called the botanist um so then there was some years out um it just what didn't prove it's, it's actually a really tough thing to organize there's lots of, of logistics lots of questions to write and, and and i ran away to papua new guinea that didn't help 
Okay, so yeah, of course, of course. So it was actually 2019 when we managed to um, run um, Botanical University Challenge again, and this coincided with 50 years of, of botany masters teaching at, at Reading. So it was one of uh, a whole series of things that we held at, uh, at Reading. Um, and there were six teams at this time. So we had Edge Hill, we had MMU, Q again, uh, Liverpool, uh, Reading and, and, and Southampton. And um, again, it was a live event um, and we had uh, questions up on the, on the screen. So here's some questions. Um, if you can see these, there's a, um, a sphagnum species, a sedge, there's a, um, some kind of, um, um, taxonomic uh, relationship there uh, shown in the um, in the diagram and then also um, uh, a plant um, a, a useful plant mastic a resin what plant does it come from so that kind of shows you the range of of questions and we've tried to keep John will talk a bit more about this later but we've tried to keep the breadth of of botany there so yes of course there's identification questions I'm a field botanist um, <laughs> I'm very keen to have those but also there are questions that cover the use of plants um, taxonomy, um, molecular biology, um, physiology, biochemistry. So we, we cover uh, a wide range and, and um, the uh, teams don't really know what's coming next. Um, anyway, here are, the, here are the questions and here are the answers. They're not the greatest. These are screen grabs, so they're a little bit hazy. Um, but we've got sphagnum denticulatum there, one of the cow horn um, sphagnums. We've got common sedge, Carex nigra. That's a paraphyletic demonstrates a paraphyletic uh, relationship. Um, and then Pistachia lentiscus is the plant that uh, resin is, um, mastic is, is derived from. And you can see from the titles on the slides that we were still following the TV format with starter questions for 10 points yes. and bonus questions for five and exactly. fingers on buzzers. Yeah, and the scoring has always been um, nice and low tech. So normally we have John with a um, a, a whiteboard, and he 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 rubs out the score and adds adds on whatever whatever um, score is made. And we haven't we well we have moved a bit away from that, but I, I rather like that. So this is the lineup there. These are all the teams. Um, and Chris Preston was our chair. Um, he did a fantastic job, um, really demonstrating, as James Wong did, that the the chairing of, of of this is really important because you can get added value from the um, from the commentary from from the chairs. And so we've kept that element um, strong. And I have to say that um, all the people that we've asked to chair, no one has refused everyone has 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 agreed um and that's right up to to the current so, so that's fantastic um reading uh again won um and this is the team here and again i wanted to flag up careers um because these are these are the ones that i know so if we work from the left you'll uh, many of you will recognize george garnet i'm sure one of the uh um uh younger members of, of bsbi he's doing a phd at cambridge now he was then a, a studying at Reading. Um, next to him, um, we've got Dan Crowley, who's at BGCI. He's a wonderful expert in, 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 in trees. Um, further to the right, we've got Will Simpson, who's at Chelsea Physic Garden. And then just to the front of him is um, Alex uh, Mills, who's at Natural England, uh, um, vascular plant specialist at Natural England. And then um, last but not least to the right is Pete Flood, who's a botanical specialist with RSK uh, Consultancy. Um, um, so there we go. George, does he not hold the record for actually representing three different yeah, universities? You'll, you'll see Botanic George, University, you'll see George, it? yes, he can't keep away. He's, he's on the Cambridge team um, for, for 20 And was on the Edinburgh team before. And was on the Edinburgh team, yes. So yeah, he just simply cannot keep away. Uh, but he hasn't, uh, he hasn't yet managed to, uh, uh, um, uh, to win beyond that, that Reading uh, win back in 2019. So to um, 2020, um, still live. We managed to increase to seven teams and we went to Ness Gardens at Liverpool. Meryl Jones, who is one of our, our planning team, stalwarts, um, put, did a great job uh, organising um, uh, at uh, uh, Ness Gardens. Uh, John, do you want to say anything? I'm, I'm just putting in this picture because what, one of the things that we want to do for the future is, is, is to get back to to face to face as well as the online and being in a botanic garden like Ness was fantastic I remember we we took the minibus there and we were had a, we had a quick look round because we 
we realized there were going to be some real plant material um, um, in, in the question. So we had a quick look round, a quick scout round. My colleague Alistair Cullen was giving the students a quick tuition in, in, in any plants that, that might crop up. Um, so yeah, this was 2020. And um, yeah, live material did feature in the questions. Here's some twigs. Um, John, I don't know if you've got any memories from the um, uh, the Liverpool uh, contest. Well, I, I think you've you've mentioned one of the key points, and it wasn't quite so last minute. Meriel, who's been a, a one of the central people over recent years, well, since the the, the Liverpool event in 2020, uh, so she gave a lot of thought beforehand to uh, live material. So quite a lot was collected before we got there. But you're right, we went out and collected even more on the morning. Uh, so an awful lot of the questions were based on material that was collected from the Botanic Gardens. It was this time of year, as you could sort of tell from the, the previous slide, and it was one of the very last events that happened before lockdown. So we were really lucky in getting that in before the world changed. Yeah, this, this, and, was, this was February 2020. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see on this slide or a subsequent slide, we had an audience on the day of about 100 people in person. And it's, yeah, it's almost strange to see that many people and nobody wearing a mask. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. This is a historic event. Absolutely. This is what life used to be like. Yeah. Um, and I think you can see again, we were following more, um, again, the, um, uh, the, 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 the television version with um, buzzers or bells or whatever they were. And, and this is a couple of the teams here, MMU and, and, and Liverpool. Um, uh, and... Um, uh, eventually, uh, the winners again were Reading, runners up uh, Liverpool. What I didn't mention actually was it, at Reading in 2019, the contest went to a tie break. It was the very last question. Um, it was Liverpool, um, Reading again, and, 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 and Reading won on the tie break. Here it was um, not a tie break, um, but it was uh, uh, Reading and Liverpool. And just again to flag up um, amongst the, the Reading team, um, I know we've got there to, uh, on the left. Um, Rebecca, who's an ecological consultant um, working in, in Berkshire, and George again next to the chair there, um, couldn't keep away. Naomi working in horticulture there, and then Joshua. Um, uh, I think Joshua was given a, a talk to BSBI before, certainly he's well known in BSBI. Um, he's doing a PhD in, in, in the United States. But this is really, it. this is, as John says, just before lockdown. So this is showing you what a live prize ceremony looks like, because you're going to see what an online prize ceremony looks like in a bit. So I don't know if you've got a close up of the, the prize, but one of the no. sort of recurring things is we've had some really lovely prizes and you, you can just about make out that that's a syneringium. It's a sea holly. But it's a paper model. It's a beautiful piece of. Oh, you've got it there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's a yes. yeah fabulous prize. Yeah. And then there was some freeze dried picture plants. Was that the year before? That was at Reading? At Reading, yeah. Yeah. We've actually moved away from trophies because, as you can see, I've got the trophy, and really the team should have the trophy, and we'd have to cut it up into four to give it to the team or, or circulate. So we've actually, you'll see, we've we've moved a bit away from having actual. Uh, trophies but yeah that they were that was absolutely beautiful and it was the low they were the local flowers the regional flowers there um for the for the first prize and, and the runners up um there's toby actually in the liverpool team and he's actually he's he's competed um, i think three times um in botanical university challenge on the right there in the liverpool team then of course yeah we went online um and um Everything changed um, uh, for the worse and, and, and to some extent to, for, for, for the better. So, yeah, one of the things that changed is being online. It allowed teams from the north of Scotland all the way down to uh, the, the south coast to, to, yeah, not need to worry about transport. So we've always had a reasonable spread, but it has always been very difficult from the the teams right in the peripheries of the, the country to sort of get in a minibus or on a train and sort of make their way to Botanical University Challenge. So we shot it, we went 
five, six, seven in the first uh, three books. And then we went up to 15 and that meant uh, we needed two chairs because it was, yeah, so many teams and so many questions. And how many hours you were saying, Jonathan, we went on? Oh, we yes, started... this is what, that's right. So we did, we had to do, obviously, 15 teams. You have to start off with 15 teams and you have to get it down to eight for the quarterfinals. So four teams of two. Um, and we had to do that. Um, so each team, each pair of teams had to have questions um, and then the quarterfinals and then the semifinals and then the finals. It was about six hours in total and it was very exhausting, um, very, very exciting, uh, but definitely very exhausting. We actually held an after party um, online and we had quite a good attendance there, even though um, people were pretty, pretty knackered. Um, and we had people, it wasn't, I mean, the thing about Tannic University Challenge is obviously it's lovely to win and be a runner up. Uh, to get to the semi-finals and so on but it's it's great to take part and and just to be part of the sort of botanical buzz which uh, which it brings and and i think the fact that the numbers have just gone from strength to strength and the students are, are stepping forward stepping up getting involved just shows that it's it's definitely a winning formula um but yeah we had alistair fitter we had colin club um fantastic chairs um and yeah pretty tiring for them because they were on the powerpoint um uh yeah um for, for about two two and a half hours each probably in total and being online it causes us to change our format as well so we could no longer use buzzers because we were concerned that this the internet speed wasn't the same for uh wouldn't necessarily be the same for all the teams and many of the teams weren't in the same location so they were spread around and needing to communicate so we changed the format so each team got a round of four questions in turn and we alternated between teams there's a full list of the teams that took part that year and highlighted in yellow is mmu who were the winners that year including Jonathan. that Josh Styles character. Yes, absolutely. He was determined to win from uh, from the first and, and and he did with the team. But we've got a, a picture of that coming a bit later. So I think we've got some examples of uh, questions coming up. So there we go, plant families um, and uh, um, British flora um, question. What? Genus contains the following species, Sylvestris, Officinalis, Arborea, and Moscata. Um, notice the little logo there. We managed to improve the logo. You can see top left, and, and uh, we were fortunate. One of the undergraduates from Reading, um, Mika, um, joined us uh, last year um, and produced, a well, I think it's a much more effective a logo. But the, the, the little logo there is demonstrating that we were online, the 2021 logo. Of course, um, there's uh, answers. Um, and you can see there we've got questions, word questions, and we've got picture questions. Uh, there you go. Um, more more questions, and here's the um, uh, winners and the runners up teams. Um, MMU, the winners, Cambridge, the, the runners up. Very exciting uh, final. And um, this is what a prize ceremony looks like online. So you saw the previous one where everyone was jostling up together and 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 admiring the um, uh, um, the prizes uh, and so on. Whereas online, it's a bit different. But we managed fireworks. There's botanical fireworks if you look um, carefully enough. So we managed to find some botanical um, fireworks. And then I think this is fairly soon after the um, the victory of MMU. You can see Josh looking very happy there. Um, and the Cambridge team uh, as, as as valiant runners up, and uh, yeah, and there's Hamish in the Cambridge team who's now part of the organising group. And yes, so, writing questions. Yes, so to left of centre there is Hamish Simmington, and he's 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 actually got quite a lot of expertise in crossword puzzle um, design and so on, and he's joined us as as one of the um, uh, the question writers. So he's dissociated from his uh, Cambridge team now and he's helping us on on the on the uh, the question team which is great because it's no small um feat um uh, to 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 do the question side as well as all the logistics of this should have done the math to work out how many questions we've written over the years now 
Uh, I think Quite we've got. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got. I think we've got some um, statistics about the questions for 22 in a mo. So, so then, of course, we moved to 2022, and you can see we're we're, we're keeping we're managing to keep it annual now, um, still online. Um, uh, John, do you want to say anything here? So we, we're we're now running over two days because we learned that six hours was just too much <laughs> for the previous year, and we also realised that. It was a huge task writing as many questions as we had done the year before when all the uh, teams had faced knockout uh, pairs of teams going head to head, uh, which, yeah, took a, a, a lot of time, but it took a lot of questions. So the, the format from last year was that the first day is a pub quiz multi-choice format, uh, which is online and Everybody answers the same questions at the same time. And we have six rounds of 10 questions and it'll be the same format again this year for the, for the knockout, getting you down to sort of the uh, eight teams. Uh, so you've got six rounds, each with a theme, each with 10 questions, each with, with five options. And then after that, we went to quarterfinals, semifinals and finals, but that was on the second day. Absolutely. Um, and you can see also here that we did um, get financial support for 2022 um, from the New Phytologist Foundation. Um, uh, that was really, really welcome. So we were able to use that for things like prizes. We also used it for um, uh, buying T-shirts, but also for helping um, fund some of the work that the students were doing to help us um, with with the logistics, so the funding was really valuable and allowed us to to, to and for the uh, technology as well to enable absolutely to, and to, to yeah the, the technology to to run online exactly exactly. Um, I think we got a couple of it. Oh yeah, so this is this is these are the teams here. Um, Sutton Bonington will 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 feature a bit later with the with the eventual uh, victors, uh, but you can see the mass of logos here um yeah uh, getting up to to 15 teams and we kind of advanced our tech a bit so we had a qr code for people to join um and we'll show you the qr code for this year so you can get your free tickets from from eventbrite um and you can see the sponsors also the field studies council very generously donated some uh, prizes in the form of identification um uh um sheets um uh, and and uh, that that was available those were available um for all participants and um, with slightly increased um numbers given to the uh, the winners and, and the runners up and and some other prizes that we'll see so with this number of um teams uh we're running over two days we needed more chairs so for our multiple choice first day uh, we had chris thoroughgood and on apprentice um working with us online um, that was fantastic. And again, as with all years, um, their individual interests and expertise um, was able to add value to the to the commentary and I think is, is, is good for, for the audience. We have to think of our audience as well. We had, uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but we had um, about a thousand people viewing the first day and, and, and uh, about 600 or so viewing, viewing the second day. Um, and it's important to to, to entertain the, the audience as well as to um, to quiz the quiz the teams. So Sandy Knapp, Lena Struva, and Raj Whitlock were our chairs for the second day, which was um, the uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals, which was more conventional, pitting pairs of teams against each other, so, so selected at random, having similar, um, uh, obviously, well, the same number of questions in in alternating rounds. Um, and one of the nice things about having the chairs with different backgrounds and different interests is that we invite them to write their own questions. So we get some, yeah, yeah, really interesting and different questions from our varied chairs. As it, and you can see that the two of the chairs were actually joining us from from overseas. So yes. Honor in in Sweden and Lena in in the USA. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. and it all worked really smoothly. Sort of, yeah. She managed did. to cope with the time difference, and yeah. didn't have any sort of technical issues at all. Yeah, that's right. And so, yeah, so um, 
for the first round, um, Chris and Anna um, put together some questions. So one of the rounds of the multiple choice was, was questions from the chairs, and that's that will be the same um, for, for, for this year. Um, and then for the um, the second day, um, the the chairs, um, uh, I, I forget exactly how the chairs contributed questions, but but uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they did. Here are some of the questions. Um, um, including bottom right, this was voted the most disgusting photograph um, of, of Botanical University Challenge 2022, the brown sauce on bacon. Um, uh, there we go. So the, this is this is, shows you the multiple choice type questions. So obviously this shows the answers. The questions come up without answers. Um, uh, 2022, there were four choices. Um, 2023, there are going to be five choices per question. You use the online um, uh, software, you work as a team, uh, and the, 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 the team captain um, presses the agreed uh, answer. You have a time limit. Um, and you go through 10 questions in a round and then the chairs go through the answers and then there's a leaderboard or an automatic leaderboard which comes up um, and it's quite exciting because obviously as you go through each round there are six rounds in total we don't get see to see the... yeah we don't get to see who's answered well who's picked which choice but we do get a breakdown of have most teams got the, the answer right or is there an even spread across the which is quite interesting and we have a an That's update right. on the score after each round of six questions yeah so absolutely yeah. so you can see when the chairs are, are giving the answers um the the screen will show you the yeah the spread of of, of, of correct answers so some questions will be Easy or, or appear easier so that uh, most teams get it right. Others are, uh, are trickier. As you say, we don't see what individual teams get until we get to the leaderboard when we have the, the ranking of, of the teams. And obviously it jostles around as the, the rounds uh, progress. And we're looking for the top eight teams to go through to the, to the quarterfinal. So what happens... Um, Yes, yeah, so that's right. So, so in the quarterfinals, so this is a shot here from the the quarterfinals. Um, this is RHS Wisley and, and Sutton Bonington, um, and Raj there is uh, our chair. And yes, yeah, so we have questions, um, and this this question would have been for one of the teams, probably RHS Wisley, um, um, and um, so each team will have, I think, four questions. And then the other team has four questions. We're changing it slightly, as John will will say, um, uh, for, for for this year. But that's your that's your quarterfinals, um, and then head to head in pairs for the semifinals and, and finals. So here we've got um, MMU and, and Sutton Bonington. So these are the two teams in, in in the finals. Getting close to the end here, you can see the three chairs there, um, and um, the eventual. Uh, winners were Sutton Bonington, came through, MMU were the, the runners-up, um, and this is a screenshot here shortly after the, um, uh, the, the winning um, questions. Um, so the excitement builds, um, and um, here we are, these are the, 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 the winning team and the, and the runners-up here being congratulated by um, uh, us and the, and the chairs there. Um, the prizes, I've already mentioned that the uh, Field Studies Council generously donated copies of their ID guides for all participants and with more for the, um, the, the, the winners and the runners up. Um, but the winners and runners up got a copy of, of the Green Planet signed by the great man. Uh, my colleague Alastair Callum and I drove to his house. Uh, we we did warn him. I wrote to him. Um, I got the address from our press officer, and he said, "Well, David Attenborough, he's uh, he's on record as saying that he'll answer any letter if there's a stamped address envelope." So I wrote a letter. I told him about Botanical University Challenge. I um, said he'd be welcome to join. Um, um, uh, also, we would be we'd like to present some copies of Green Planet um, as prizes. Would he sign them? And he said, "Yeah, if you can get them to me or bring them to me." Um, I got a letter within a couple of days, um, and so we had 
Um, I think I got COVID soon after that, so we had a bit of a delay. But then eventually I went um, uh, with my colleague and, yeah, we met the great man. Uh, he signed um, uh, the slips of paper, which we, we we stuck into the books, and those were um, prizes for the winners and the runners-up. So I think that's a really nice um, souvenir, which is uh, unlikely to be repeated. Um, so there we are. So we're always thinking um, ar around prizes um, and, and how that might that might develop. So this, John, if you'd like to say, but this is this is the this is the plans for twenty three coming up in just a couple of weeks' time. So yeah, after our first experience of going online and it lasting all afternoon and much of the evening, we went into two days, and even that was quite long as uh, the second session. Yeah. And so we decided to go to three days this time so the first day which is coming up shortly on the 15th of february will be the knockout with the uh, multi-choice as for last year uh, as jonathan's pointed out there'll be five options rather than four options then we'll have the quarterfinals on the 22nd and then off in july we'll have the semi-finals and the finals and there's going to be a different format for the quarterfinals than we've had previously and the reason for that is we spend a lot of time making sure that it's as much fun as possible and that means working hard to make sure that teams can always do reasonably well and that nobody feels humiliated by getting questions that they can't do because you, you might not appreciate this but on the tv version if they have a round of questions too long a run of questions where the students can't answer them they edit it out so on the telly the students always look really impressive because you never get long sort of runs of questions where they just don't know the answer well we've not got the ability to do that because we're running live and everybody can see that so we try and sort of uh, make the the questions answerable but there are some there are quite a lot of tricky questions in there and one of the things we've done to try and make it fairer this time instead of pulling randomly teams out of a hat and uh, for the quarterfinals uh, or even seeding them so the highest team goes against the, uh, the, the, the lowest scoring team in, in the knockout round. What we're going to do is have all the teams answering a set of four questions in turn and then just the high scoring teams will go out. So it won't be head to head in the quarterfinals, but it will be head to head in the semifinals and obviously in the final. Absolutely. Um, and you can see there that we've got now 24 separate teams. So the, the, the registration closed recently. We've um, we've got more funding uh, this year, but not quite enough funding to do everything we want. So what we've done this year is we've actually dropped the, the idea of having special T-shirts. Um, they're quite expensive. Uh, and that also means that we're not so time pressed because in the past we needed to make sure the t-shirts came in time so that students could wear them on the day um now we're not doing t-shirts we're encouraging uh, teams to 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 wear botanically themed clothing maybe design their own t-shirt using the logo or whatever um, but it means we had a bit more time so we were able to delay the registration date and we've ended up with 24 amazing teams i have to say it's going to be well worth you attending if only to hear the team names and i'm not going to do spoilers now and read out my favorites but there are some amazing team names coming through uh, 111 students in total which is up from 85 odd um, last year so the students really are um uh, uh, taking to this and, and are coming forward. We've got six first-time teams. So we've got for the first time Bristol. Let's put up the um, uh, the logos here. We've got this for the first time Bristol, Dundee, UEA, Exeter, uh, at Trinity College Dublin and University College Dublin. And I should say that last year in 22 was the first time that we had a team from um, Public of Ireland. So we had Galway uh, last year. We've got the University of Galway, as they're now called, this year again, plus the two colleges in, in, in Dublin. So you can see there the map that Merrill's put together that we stretch from the Eden Project um, all the way through, uh, including Aberystwyth in, in yeah, Wales. We've got Wales back. 
Well, we've not what? got anybody from Yorkshire. There's no Yorkshire team this time. No, that's right. No one from York. Edinburgh, not this time. But we've got um, Aberdeen. Uh, we've got Dundee. Um, uh, two, two Liverpool, of course, Liverpool and Edge Hill. So we've got a great spread, and and I can see that this 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 will continue to grow. You can see all the logos there. We had a bit of a fun and games with the logos because uh, one or two of the places have changed their logos relatively recently, and so we were putting up social media and we were getting a a, a gentle um, uh, message via social media. We've actually changed our logos, so I th I hope these are all up to date logos. If anyone's watching and they knows that one of them is is not please let us know but there we go very impressive uh 24 teams are going to be going for uh the knockouts on the 15th of feb i hope you can see i've got um uh john warren's uh, face covering up the um the, the qr code but top right there is is a qr code that you where you can get your 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 tickets but we'll see more of that in a bit um uh, these are our, our wonderful chairs, or at least five of them. One is yet to be uh, announced. So on the 15th, we've got Leif Besweden. Um, he's well known to, to BSBI, as is Henry Ford, um, uh, taking the, the multiple choice rounds. Um, Carolyn Lehman from Edinburgh, Paul Ashton from Edge Hill will be taking the quarterfinals on the 22nd of Feb. Beverly Glover um, uh, and a, a colleague from Nottingham uh, will be taking uh, the final. So we're delighted. And as I say, all the chairs that we've asked have, 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 have accepted um, straight away. So that's, I think, a really nice sign that, 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 that we're doing things we're doing things well um, uh, with this. So people are really enjoying coming and, 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 and taking part. Um, I think, John, that you've um, we've covered that as we've explained along, this. We, really? Yeah. So this is the basically we're evolving uh, in, in in different ways. So the, the quiz format's evolving, but also um, the actual uh, structure of what we're doing um, is is changing. So we've got some new developments alongside the quiz because we're very keen. Uh, John, right at the beginning, talked about these these groups of of, of uh, uh, plant aware or botanical or plant science students who felt um, isolated and one of the roles that we 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 think uh, botanical university challenge can really address is is helping connect these these students these like-minded students and this can be done online of course this can be done through botanical university challenge it can be done in other ways and one way is that we've developed a newsletter and this is run um, by some of the um, uh, planning team also some of our alumni um, uh, uh, who, who have, have taken on editorial roles uh, and we, it, student vote decided to call the, the newsletter The Times. So that's a nice botanical um, <laughs> take on, on, on newspaper titles. And this runs about four times, well, roughly quarterly. Um, and in fact, it's Hattie Thomas, I think, is it from, um, um, from Lancaster, who's um, really... Oh. We got right. Sorry, Hattie Roberts. I apologize, Hattie, if you're listening, um, uh, who's really um, uh, helped us a lot. Um, uh, but but a number of other alumni as well. Um, the um, graphics are designed by Yi, who's one of the Cambridge um, team students. Um, so, yeah, there's 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 a lot going on. We've got a competition, which is a botanical themed competition, um, which we'll be saying more about um, uh, during the um, during Botanical University Challenge. But the other thing that we've developed is the Student Festival of Botany. Um, because we, it's great being online, we can get more students and so on. However, there's nothing quite like uh, being face to face, being together, being able to discuss, being able to network um, and, and do botanical activities together. So for the finals, alongside the finals, which will be on the um, 5th of, of July, the Wednesday afternoon, um, in the evening on the 5th and also on the 6th, um, all the participant students um, who've, who've participated from the first round are invited to, to Nottingham. We have funding to help um, with travel and funding to cover uh, their accommodation in the in the uh, um, uh, the accommodation at, at Nottingham um, and the festival will involve uh, careers workshop. It'll involve a plant swap. It'll involve a visit 
to plant sciences um, facilities uh, at Nottingham, plant identification challenges. Um, and um, yeah, basically the idea is, is, is we can get together again and we're really looking for this to, to, to really signal a new um, element of, of Botanical University Challenge, getting together in, in, in different ways. And this is our first student festival of botany. Um, and I've asked, we've asked the students that have registered if they're available and, and, and so far really high proportion of the students um, who've signed up for Botanical University Challenge are available for the, those dates in July. So we're hoping for a really good attendance and, and, and a really good event. Um, we mentioned New Phytologist Foundation sponsors. We've increased our sponsorship um, from, uh, we still have uh, funding from New Phytologist Foundation, also from the British Ecological Society and from the Gatsby Foundation. Um, as well as, as prizes offered from the Field Studies Council and also from, from BSBI. Um, so we're, we're grateful for all the support um, uh, because we can't do all, all the things that we want to do without um, uh, this kind of, of support. Example questions for Botanical University Challenge 2023 are not available, <laughs> but um free tickets are and if you um uh, follow the qr code um or indeed if you go to our website botanicaluniversitychallenge.co.uk and i think um sarah's going to put the um the link in in the chat um uh, you can find all the information you need and i don't think in this day and age it's very difficult for you to get hold of either uh, john or myself um or via bsbi um so the question is, have you got your free tickets yet? We've we've got um, uh, not far off 200 um, tickets gone already, but we're hoping that that um, we'll, we'll we'll increase the audience over over last year. We are um, we have been writing up um, our experiences because we think it's really important to communicate what we're doing. So the next issue of the niche from British Ecological Society, which comes out in March, has uh, an article about Botanical University Challenge written by um, um, our planning team. Um, also, we are close to submitting a manuscript to Plants, People and Planet, which um, uh, goes into more detail about um, Botanical University Challenge and, and what we've achieved and what we're hoping to achieve in the future. John, would you like to say a bit about the future? Well, it's an idea that has taken off. It's uh, certainly been copied in Spain, hasn't it? Yes. Uh, and the two of us helped run a botanical university challenge for the uh, Botanical Society of America. And they were very keen on it, but they've not actually got round to organising one for themselves. But we're kind of keen to spread the idea and get in book running in other parts of the world and then potentially having a world championship where champions from different parts of the globe can compete against each other. But that's sort of something for the future. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great idea, but there are, as you can imagine, if you, you think about it, um, a number of, of logistical and, and, and other issues. Our um, local ID rounds would need to be very <laughs> Yes, exactly. But it's definitely um, something to, to have in mind and to be thinking about. And in fact, we are uh, we have um, uh, we have in mind another piece that we want to write for the journal tax on, which is um, looking more at the international aspects of, of uh, botanical uh, botanical quizzing. So there are challenges and opportunities and we're very much um, uh, looking forward to to to, to grasping these. Um, the John and I have, have presented this, but there is there are others involved and who have been involved, and indeed a, a few on, that are not shown on here, um, who have helped us um, through the history um, since 2015-16 um, with Botanical University Challenge, and, and are going to help us um, taking it forward because it can only continue, and we feel it has a value both as this fun and friendly quiz, and also bringing together students. Uh, providing uh, a platform for for um, uh, our, our student alumni to, uh, to to get together online and and um, um, and and, and uh, 
in real time. And all of the people illustrated here have helped us in, in many different ways. Um, some have been involved from the beginning. In fact, many have, and some have um, uh, joined us uh, more recently. But but this whole Botanic University challenge really depends on actually quite a lot of voluntary work. And one of my ambitions um, is to, to really work on the funding uh, stream. Um, to look for novel, um, novel uh, funders um, and uh, really, really demonstrate the value of this. Because if we can demonstrate the value of what we're doing, and, and it, really the value is to the students and with the students, then I think we can enhance our funding and we can actually start to 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 pay, particularly student alumni, to to help us uh, with this project. So thank you to all of these. Uh, people here and also thank you for uh, joining us and for, for listening to us. This is our final slide um, and uh, we would welcome if there are any um, questions from the audience but please do visit our website, do follow the QR code and get your tickets because um, you won't be disappointed. Um, it's a fantastic afternoon, um, the first uh, multiple choice afternoon and the quarterfinals in, in, in the following week. Thank you, John and Jonathan. That was fantastic. Thank you. Um, I, just to echo that, if anyone does have any questions, do pop them in the Q&A. Uh, I thought if, if, if you're if all right with you, I have one to start with. Um, but I was just wondering, you, uh, you've obviously got a large team there helping you already. Uh, are there ways for people to get involved who aren't part of your group already? Should they email you? People might be keen to be question writers or just to lend a hand with even spreading the word. Absolutely. John, do you want to say something about that? I was going to say all of the above. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> particularly because I I spend a lot of time writing questions and every year, there, well, as you point out, Jonathan, there are so many plants and we could have so many questions about each one. We're never going to run out of questions, but it is nice to have questions written by different people. So even if you don't think you can contribute lots of time to helping us run it, We'd love to receive sort of botanical questions if you want to contact us and send us your questions. Absolutely. And I just just add to that. Yes, if you're interested, you want to, to, to learn more um, or get involved, do do contact us. We're very we're very open. We're very willing to um, uh, to answer questions and, and to to have uh, people get involved. Fantastic. Thank you. We've had a, a sort of an admin question from Joanne Meyer, who's asked. Uh, what was your YouTube channel that you mentioned earlier in the talk? Oh, mine is, well, the, the Botanic University Challenge has its own YouTube channel, and that really has the, it has the full um, quiz from last year. Um, it has some uh, videos which show the teams, because when we have the teams, we get the teams to prepare a slide which shows their, the team and their team name. Also slides that show with the institutions, and there's some videos which show all of those. Um, my own YouTube channel is Dr. M Goes Wild, um, and it's a mixture of, of, of things. Um, so it, it's, it's got botanical stuff, it's got some musical stuff. Um, but it does have, um, and I should have got the link, it does have... Sorry, really they're nice both in the chat now. Thank you. It's got a, a, it, what I really like when I looked at it, it's got the, the introductions that, that Colin and, and um, uh, James gave, James Wong gave right back in 2016. So that's a nice little, a nice little memory. Fantastic. Thank you. I wonder what, what makes a good question? Are you looking for, for an ID skills or is it more to do with um sorry <laughs> yeah we're you shaking your head early doors there so i'm gonna stop no i'm not I'm shaking saying. no i'm not I'm, I'm not shaking my head i'm just thinking we didn't put we could have put the sort of philosophy really mm. we have a long list of topics because plants are everywhere aren't they so 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 we use plants for for thing for eating uh for medicines um there's taxonomy there's identification there's there's the uk plants there's global plants um uh, so we try our best. Um, we're, I guess, I, I mean, I'm a field botanist, so 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 I I, I really like to have um, field based questions. But we try our best to to cover the range um, that 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 uh, uh, demonstrated by by plants, um, and we do try to give the students hints. So we've actually told them we had we we held an online briefing session, and we have actually told them that there's some headlines of the rounds that are coming up on the fifteenth. Uh, there's UK and Irish plants, there's world plants, there's, um, 
other stuff. There's I cultural things out there. I can't remember. I won't say it now because there's... I might get it wrong. But it's on the um, it, it's 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 you can find that on the website. It's a it's a good question. But I, I guess John, you might want to add. I mean, basically, we try our best to cover the breadth because plants are just everywhere, and and questions that are about plants need to try to cover that that breadth. And we cover botany in its traditional sense as well. So it's not just sort of flowering plants, it's it's fungi and algae and lower plants as well, isn't it? It is. It, it is. The, the, the focus is is definitely on, on the vascular plants and on the, the uses and so on. But yes, we, we try to have something for everyone. And also, you know, we are thinking about the audience as well. We want the, and we know the audience play along um, <laughs> because last year on the we have a li we live stream. So you, you can see the I think one or two of the slides, you could see the comments so we could see people putting in their their stream of answers. So 10, you know, the 10 responses that they they uh, they had, you know, the letters or whatever it was, the numbers. Um, we're going to try this year. Uh, the tech team are working on being able to produce a little um, recording sheet um, so that audience can play along. We were wondering whether we'd be able to get the audience to play along on a separate sort of online stream. That's not for this year, uh, maybe for the future. But we hope to get um, a, a mechanism whereby audience can, you know, write down their answers and can can see how well they do in a, in a more form. Well, you know. Great. You've, you've answered the next question I was going to ask, which was from Amanda, who said, uh, any facility in mind for viewers to quiz along with the officially recorded scores? So, the suggestion yes. there is that she she could do that in the chat. She could she well. She can do it in the chat. Um, we're going to have a form that people can um, either use online or can print out, um, so that they can, and then they can post up their score and say, "Oh, ha, ha, I got ten out of ten for this um, kind of thing." Um, that's the idea. Um, uh, that's what the, the tech team have been discussing. So yes, we, we're trying to to to, to make it um, good for for audience to play along as well. And we do have a um, a post quiz um survey questionnaire which we um send around to the um student participants but also to the audience because we're keen to get data mm. and reactions um to help improve to help um see what what's worked and what what we could what we could improve but also for our um for our publications Great. And there's um, a recommendation potentially for that there here from uh, Hu Jing, who says, is it possible to have past questions in a PDF available for us audience? I enjoyed it so much last year and learned a lot. So oh, lots well, of fans really cool. in tonight. I mean, <laughs> we have thought about writing a Botanical University Challenge quiz book. Um, but to be honest, <laughs> you know, we're all, um, uh, you know, we've all got jobs to do. Or even if we're retired, we've got plenty, plenty to do. Um, but that is it's on the list. Um, uh, I think there's, there's a lot of scope. I mean, plants are just well, we it's a, I'm preaching to the converted here. But but I think it's, um, you know, the, there is so much to plants, so many dimensions that there's. Well, I said I once said the sky's the limit to a colleague and she wasn't impressed because actually, of course, the way beyond the we should be thinking way beyond the sky that, that but they the plants are, are limitless in their in their um fascination beauty and importance fantastic it sounds like we've at least got a, an audience of people there who are happy to say they're botanists now even if that's not what you had john uh back in the day but now everyone's out and proud as botanists yeah yeah it, it's done a lot for their confidence i think yeah, and I, I think I think that's what we felt, wasn't it, John, back then? And actually, I remember I showed. Um, uh, oh heavens, um, it's gone. But um, I think what we found is that that we were absolutely right. That 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 there is this. That the, there are these students who are really keen. If they're in small groups, it, it, it's difficult. But they, you know, they've come forward. You know, you can just see that from the numbers. You know, one hundred and eleven individual students signed up <laughs> some of those are reserves but they're signing up they may get to play they may not but they'll certainly get an invitation to to the fest the botanical festival in in, in nottingham Brilliant. well thank you both so much that's all the questions we've got and i think we should probably wrap up there for yep. time um but yeah once again thank you so much um we'll make sure that we put all the links that we've shared in a follow-up email to everyone who's who's joined tonight so that everyone's got access to those going forwards but i'm looking forward to those first rounds in in just what are we now? Two weeks time. Thank yeah, you. thanks very much. And see you on the 15th. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for joining and uh, speak to you soon. Bye.